Today I'm going to show you how to add an IP camera to your 3D printers using one of these $7.50 ESP32 cameras. This method will be able to work with Marlin, Clipper, RepRap, or any other type of firmware that you have running for your printer because it's not reliant on the printer's firmware in order to view the camera. However, I am going to show you how to set this up in mainsail if you are using Clipper. So let's take a look at what we have going on here. We have an ESP32 camera, and these have built-in Wi-Fi, which makes adding it to your Wi-Fi network super easy. This also comes with a built-in serial to USB board right here, which makes it super easy to code, and it means you no longer have to use one of these FTDI chips like you would for an older ESP32 cam, or if you didn't have this board with it already. I got a pack of four of these from Amazon, which cost me $30 in total because I have multiple printers. There's gonna be a link in the description below where you can get yours as well. This is currently how I have it set up and my CR5 Pro H, and we're gonna get to how you get there real soon. So now we're gonna jump into the coding aspect of it. So all you're gonna need is a mini USB to USB-A cable. If you have this type of connection on your board, you're also gonna need a free USB port on your computer and Arduino IDE, but let's jump onto the PC for this. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is head over to arduino.cc, go down to software and to downloads. If you have Windows 10 or newer and a 64-bit system, you can use this link here or select the appropriate link for the software that you're going to use. For this project, Windows 10 and Windows 11 both have the ability to automatically install the driver for your ESP32 cam. Once you've downloaded Arduino IDE, you can go ahead and install everything by accepting all the defaults and then once you open it up, you're going to get something just like this. It might not have a board selected, but that's okay. We'll get to that in just a second. But before we get here, there's a couple things we need to do first. So before we jump into the coding aspect of everything, we're gonna head over to this uh, installing documentation provided by the manufacturer, which there'll be a link in the description below for this. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to this link here, the stable release link. And what this is, is basically a package of everything that you're gonna need for all the code in your Arduino environment. So once we have that link copied, what we're gonna do is head back into Arduino IDE. So what we're gonna do is head over to File, Preferences, and then Additional Boards Manager URL, which will be here. That's where you're gonna copy that, or that's where you're gonna paste that link that you just copied. And then we're gonna hit OK. And after you've done that, at this point, you can go ahead and plug in your camera via USB to your computer. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna to go to Tools, go to Board, Board Manager, and then right in here, it's gonna pop up your board manager. We're gonna search for ESP32. Here we go, ESP32 by Expressive Systems. I already have mine installed, but if you don't have yours installed, you can go ahead and click install. There'll be a bunch of versions. It's always recommended to use the latest one there. Now, once you have this installed, what we're gonna to need to do is find out what port your camera's on. So to do that, we can hit the start button here and then just type in devmgmt.msc or device manager, it'll come right up. That works with Windows 11 as well. And then we're going to go over to Ports and Com. We're going to go down here, and when we see CH340, that lets us know that that's where our camera's on. So that's the USB port, COM3. And once you find that, we're going to go over to here to where it has whatever board you had last. If you had one or if you had nothing, then we're just going to select Unknown COM3. What board this is is going to be the AI Thinker ESP32 Cam. We're going to make sure that that is selected for whatever port it was on your machine, and then we're going to hit OK. So now once we have this board selected, what we're going to do is go over to File, Examples, and then there's going to be examples for AI Thinker ESP32 Cam. It's cool because there's a lot of a lot of different ones in here if you want to play around, but for the purposes of this video, we're just going to hit ESP32. We're going to go to Camera and Camera Web Server. What that will do is it's going to open up a sketch that was already created for this camera by the manufacturer. We have some different tabs up here, and what we're going to do is we're going to go through some of these, make some changes where we need to for this specific model, but, and then we're going to make sure that it's working right before we install it in our printer. But first, let's go over to this camerawebserver.ino. What we're going to do here is this is where you set your definition for what camera model you have. And we do not have this one here, the ESPI. We have the AI Thinker one. So we need to comment this out by putting two forward slashes. Then we're going to go down to here where the AI Thinker is, and we're going to uncomment that. Now that lets the program know that we are running this camera model and it will use pins and everything else that it needs for this specific camera model. Next up, what we're gonna do is we're going to set our SSID and our password. So put this, whatever it is for your network, let's just say, for example, my network is foul news, 
and my password is I ate too much cheese last week for 2069. The most secure password network you'll ever find. So go ahead and make those adjustments for whatever your SSID and your password is. That way it can easily connect to your Wi-Fi when we're ready to do so. One thing worth mentioning when you have your SSID and password input, you're going to want to make sure that your uh, SSID name matches exactly as your network name. So for instance, if I used a lowercase f here instead of a capital, it will not connect. Also, you're going to need the quotes here and the quotes here. If either your SSID or password contains a double quotation like this, it will only take up to what's between the first two quotation marks. So what you can do is you can add a backslash before the quotation mark and the backslash will be ignored, but it will pass the double quote through to your password or your SSID if you're a complicated person like that. So moving on to things that are specific to this exact camera that I've got here, and also specific to Clipper and Mainsail, which this part isn't necessary if you're not going to be using this with Mainsail, but if you are, you're gonna to need to make some changes right here. So first we're gonna take the config.frame size line here and we're gonna change around a couple things. The frame size is currently UXGA, but we need to change that to SVGA because for some reason, UXGA will not work with Mainsail. So once that's changed, we also have a couple other little things to change. And we're going to scroll down right to where it says config.pixel format equals pix or pixformat.jpg. We're going to leave that alone, but the one right below it, the set frame size, we're going to make sure that again, that is SVGA. And that's all we need to change in the camera webserver.ino. So next we're going to go over to camera pins.h because for some reason this particular camera is um, not set up the same exact way as the example here, but we're going to change it just a, just a few things here to make sure that it's going to work the way we need it to work. So once we're over in this tab here, we're going to scroll down till we find our camera model, which is the AI thinker here. So by default, the LED number here is actually four. It should not be set to 33. It won't work with uh, 33 on it. Don't know why it's there like that, but the actual LED for flash on here is four. So we'll change that over to four now. And then once you've changed that, we're gonna go back over to camera web server.ino, just double checking everything that it looks okay and everything looks okay to me. So while the board's plugged in, it's always a good idea to, to verify that the code is right. It will compile the sketch, which takes about a minute or two. And it looks like the sketch is valid. So what we're going to do now is we're going to upload the sketch by clicking the upload button here, which will install the sketch on your camera. It'll do the same thing. It'll start compiling the sketch and then just give it some time. This can take anywhere from a minute and a half to three to four minutes, depending on the speed of your computer, USB connection quality, etc. So just let it do its thing. Once it's all set up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the serial monitor because we have to find out what IP this thing just connected to. So to do that, we're gonna go over to the top right here where it says serial monitor. We're gonna click on that. And if you don't see anything happening in the serial monitor yet, we're gonna hit that reset button on this board here and then come back over to serial monitor. And you'll get some messages here. One thing to note is if you get just a bunch of garbled text that just looks like these symbols, make sure that your baud rate matches the baud rate of the camera, which is, in this case, 115,200 baud. So you'll get a message here. You may have to scroll down at the bottom here and it will say Wi-Fi connected, camera ready. Use and it will give you a local IP address to use for this. So to verify that this is working, we're going to grab this IP address here in between the single quotations, we're gonna control C, copy it, and we're gonna go over to our browser and pop it in there and then hit enter. And if all's working well, you'll be brought to this page here, which is the camera's IP address. And we're gonna go ahead and hit start stream, which, hey, there's the computer there. So one thing to note is it might be a little bit laggy, uh, especially your first go around. These things don't really like to be powered via a, just a standard data USB port. They work a lot better with either a USB charger or if you have five volts going directly into the five volt pin itself, they're a lot more stable. And we're gonna see how that looks soon. So what we can do from here to test that our LED is working, we're going to put this uh, LED slider all the way up 
and that makes sure that that number four pin you defined is the correct pin and in this case it is you can probably see it kicking on and off here which <laughs> isn't the best um isn't the best looking right now but believe me it does get better so from here we're going to stop the stream and we can go ahead and leave all of these settings as they are you can play with all of this as you'd like and just kind of get it good to where it looks good for yourself and since we have it defaulted to this resolution if you're going to be using mainsail i suggest that you leave it on this uh, resolution because that's what works with mainsail with this camera maybe others might work but this is the only one that i found that will work without any issues and at this point if you have marlin you're just going to go to your ip address here and this is how you're going to be able to monitor your prints from now on however if you have mainsail what you need to do is go over into mainsail and you can see my cr5 pros camera right there the one that is already existing is all set up here but if you're adding a webcam for the first time what you're going to need to do is go over to the settings button over here scroll down to webcams and then we can even add a webcam just because I don't want to delete that one. So the URL for this webcam is going to be the IP address that you have for yours, which we can grab right from here. And then we're going to go back over to here. And then interestingly enough, this is something you have to do as well. You're going to have to hit the colon here and do port 81 forward slash stream. I'm not sure why, but that's what mainsail wants. Yeah, we'll just name this one Ender 3 because that's probably where this camera will end up going. You can have it target frames per second. You can have it not do that, but we're just gonna put it over here to MPEG streamer that seems to be the most stable. And as you'll see that there's nothing coming up here just yet, and that's okay. So we're gonna hit save webcam. And if you go over to wherever your webcam is, this can take sometimes up to three to five minutes to load. You might just get a white screen at first, that happens uh, almost all the time when I first turn on my um, my CR5's camera. And since again, this is running off USB port, which it really doesn't like, uh, we're gonna get some bad frames per second, but that's not that big of an issue just yet. So we can also select which camera we want here, the ESP32, I just never renamed it, I got lazy. That's what's on my CR5 Pro right now. It's dark in that room, so you really won't be able to see anything that's going on in there. I don't have the case light on. Anyway, we can also select the one that we just added, which will be whichever one you have there. And like I said, this screen might be white. Just give it a few minutes. Uh, it's a little finicky. And we're going to see we've got some poor frames per second. I'm telling you now, it does get better if you have a stronger network, if you have two things, a stronger network connection and you have a stable power source. The stable power source is going to be the biggest factor in quality. Don't ask me why, but they're very finicky running off of USB power. So you can now choose if you're going to be using uh, this camera through mainsail, or if you're going to be using this camera just directly through the web page here. If you've got Marlin, you can do that in whichever way you like. So one thing I like to do that's not required, but it does make things a whole lot easier, is assign this a static IP address from your router. And now this will always have this IP address and I don't have to worry about chasing it around and adding it to mainsail or trying to find it over here again. And once that's done, we're going to get to the wiring of it and we're going to get to the installation. One quick thing to note is if you're going to be using this in mainsail, you want to make sure that the start stream is, or you want to make sure that the stream is stopped on this web page, otherwise it will not load in mainsail. But if you just want to view it in this, you can hit start stream and stop stream whenever you want, just so you can see what's going on here. And I found this design on Thingiverse, but it was lacking some things, mainly some cooling and a spot for the LED. So let's hop in Design Spark Mechanical and make some of those adjustments real quick. And this file will be available on Thingiverse. I'll have a link in the description below, as well as a link to the original creator's design. And the same goes for this back plate over here as well. I wanted to make an area for the DuPont connector to fit through since I wasn't going to be using um, the connection style that the original creator had in mind, as well as opening up a hole back here for ventilation because this camera does get quite hot. And also I decided to make a bracket that just bolts right up to the CR5 Pro, make life just a little bit easier. Our test fit is looking good. The bolt holes line up and it goes up and in there, but we're about seven and a quarter millimeters a bit too long here. So instead of just buying shorter bolts, 
I will throw some uh, seven and a quarter millimeter spacers in there. And if you're wondering, it absolutely does clear the print head with plenty of space. So now I'm just taking a cheap buck converter and testing it out at 24 volts and turning down the potentiometer till it gets to about five volts. And that's what we're gonna use as our output for our ESP32 cam. So my case is printed, it didn't come out great, uh, probably because I'm using too big of a nozzle for these fine little detailed parts, and I printed them all at once, so that's usually never a great idea. But anyway, we're not looking, we're not here to look pretty, we're here to get a job done. So I'm going to assemble this all together, make a wiring harness to go from the printer power supply into this buck converter that I just tuned for five volts, and then ultimately to the ESP32 cam with some nice DuPont connectors. So I know my printer's not a normal setup, considering I've got the SKR Mini E3 and a whole bunch of spaghetti that maybe one day I'll clean up, and an orange pie as well. But I found that this is probably a good spot to mount this buck converter. It's not touching the frame, which we don't want it touching any metal because it can short, and that's never a good idea. So I'll have it powered from this power supply, coming out, run wires up through here, going all the way to the top, into there and that's where the camera's gonna live. So before buttoning everything up, it's a good idea always to test your work. I ended up soldering um, this wire here and that goes to the voltage positive and then the voltage negative on the power supply. I made sure that the buck converter was dialed down to five volts on the output, which it is. And I threw a little heat sink on the MOSFET here just for a little bit of better heat dissipation because these things can get a little bit warm. And then I've got this wire, which I will zip tie up once I have my camera in place and I have the camera on and it is working. I know it's a crappy video recording of a computer screen, but let's go ahead and turn on the LED. There's a little bit of a delay, but nothing crazy, but we can see it's working. You get a nice lovely view of uh, the floor here and we'll turn the LED off and it's off. So at this point, I think everything is ready to be buttoned up and then put back together. Uh, this, instead of using the corner up here, which I originally designed this for, but this will work pretty much in any corner, I, I ended up going with this one just because that this conduit here was a lot more free. There's a lot more wires running through this one, as you can see through here, and there was just no space to run any more wires, so this was the easier choice. Everything is more or less buttoned up in the bottom end of things here, zip tied nicely, and again, maybe eventually I'll take care of this, but for now I'm not going to. And here's how the camera install came out. I used an M4 by 30 millimeter uh, stainless screw with an M4 nylon lock nut, and with it a little bit taut, I still have enough control to move this camera in slight angles just so I can get the best adjustment point, but I think probably about that way is going to be plenty fine, and uh, yeah, overall I like how it looks, and let's put everything back together and test it out for real. So here is the end result. I've got the camera set up this way, and like I mentioned before, I can change the angle of the dangle here whenever I please, but just about there looks perfect for me, and I'll be able to monitor most of my prints quality like that. The next upgrade would be taking this and being able to use this physical switch and also a relay controlled by mainsail, or the orange pie, or whatever you want to call it. So I could have this light turn on and off if I'm remote. But this LED in here is actually so powerful, it can illuminate this whole thing no problem. So I decided to change up the design a little bit and I put this swivel attachment on instead of having it just fixed. That way I could see a little bit better without maybe just having it fixed always in one spot. Uh, can still rotate up and down, which is nice, and we can just kind of adjust the viewing angle as we like. Now, eventually, I'm going to have it maybe up here or out here a little bit more and forward or something, that way I can see the first layer, but usually I'm pretty close by the printer when I see the first couple layers just to make sure everything's going good. However, this is just a great addition for after those first few layers have uh, completed, and then we can start seeing the rest of the build. And with this new design change, like I said, you can still move the camera about, and have all different viewing angles. I made some kind of mistake here where I put the nut hole a little too close to this rail. However, it does not interfere with the moving of the X and Y axis, which is pretty nice, but I will fix that before I put these files public. But for now, that looks like all we need. And as I mentioned before, you can see the camera looks a lot more fluid now. It really likes having a solid and steady power supply. So if you got 5 volts constantly going to it instead of like a USB connection, 
it'll spit out like a good 15 to sometimes even 20 frames a second. But for just monitoring the print and not actually producing video, this camera works awesome. And for $7.50, you really can't go wrong. And another cool feature is you can view this on your phone as well. Mainsail is awesome like that. But also if you're just using the camera's IP address, you can view that on your phone just fine as well. And that's going to do it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like it if you like it. Hit subscribe because I'm going to have some more cool printer mods coming up in the future. And uh, leave a comment if you have a question or if you just want to say something that I did wrong, which I probably did. So that's going to do it for now. So remember, as always, keep it foul.